So for a while now, I have noticed that I cannot leave any kind of food out on the range after we're done filming. Even something like this entire gallon of mayonnaise will get ripped open and completely devoured by a mystery creature. Today I brought my lunch and I set it on this table and it was a small box of KFC. We did some filming. We weren't very far away, maybe 50 yards away. Come back, the box is gone. We've been searching forever and we found it. So, pretty sure he's living in here. You can see my box of KFC chicken. It's a chicken. He didn't even eat all of it. Wasteful. What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. And a question that I get asked a lot is what is the best option for home defense? Well today I'm going to give you my personal top five home defense weapons. Let's go get set up and get started. particular order, I'm going to give you my top five personal choices for home defense. First, we're going to have a little bit of fun with each one, and then we're going to perform a little test with some drywall and some ballistic gel and see how suitable they actually are for home defense. So my first personal choice for home defense that I present to you is the classic double barrel shotgun. But this is not just your average double barrel shotgun. This is a double barrel 10 gauge shotgun with 32 inch barrels. Elmer Fudd ain't got nothing on me. Check this out. That is a three and a half inch 10 gauge double lot buck shell. Your average 12 gauge shell has about nine pellets. This is packing 18. So that means with both barrels loaded up, you're packing a whopping 47 pellets. So down range, I have one gallon of relish, one gallon of tartar sauce, one gallon of mayonnaise, and one gallon of Tabasco sauce. Let's see how they hold up to the almighty 10 gauge. Here we go. <laughs> oh. I got two more rounds of three and a half inch double lot buck. That's another whopping 63 pellets going down range. Here we go. Oh! smell of Tabasco with tartar, mayonnaise, relish, it's not very appealing. All right, we know that the 10 gauge double barrel shotgun can do a really good job at destroying some inanimate objects, but now let's see what would happen if we use it in a real world home defense scenario. So today I have a rather large block of ballistic gel, check this thing out. It's like two blocks in one. A big thank you to Clear Ballistics for sending this over to us. I'm gonna place this behind the drywall. This is two layers of half inch drywall with insulation in between. We're gonna shoot through it and see how much penetration we get into this ballistic gel. But why does that matter? Well, most people want a home defense weapon to not have much over penetration. But if someone breaks in my house, I ain't coming out of my bedroom, I'm scared. So I need to be able to defend my home from the bedroom. I need to be able to make it through some drywall and have plenty of penetration. 
But before we blast this drywall with my double barrel 10 gauge, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, CF Moto. If you're in the market for a reliable ATV or UTV that's not going to break the bank, you need to check out CF Moto. As you know, I am not exactly gentle on things, but my CF Motos have held up quite well. My U-Force 1000 is great for daily chores around the property, and my Overland 1000 is great for work and play, but I use it for mostly play. If you want to check them out, there will be a link in the description down below. Again, a big thank you to CF Moto for sponsoring today's video. Okay, here we go. Oh! <laughs> So it looks like we had a very tight pattern with the 10 gauge and we definitely had some over penetration. I have to say I am pretty pleased with those results. Now let's move on to my next choice. Some people prefer a shotgun for home defense and some people prefer a rifle. My rifle of choice for home defense is the Ohio Ordnance H car. This thing is an absolute monster. It is a semi-automatic platform and it is chambered in 30-06. This is a 20-round mag with 20 rounds of 150-grain full metal jackets. Let's see what it can do to this 20 gallons of slime. You just got jammed. Okay, now for the old drywall test. I have one round of Underwood ammo, 30-06. That's 150 grain AccuBond. Let's see what happens. Oh! That's a lot of power. Well, I have to say, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with that. We have us a hit right there and then we blew through the back of the drywall. Then it looks like we hit our gel. Ah! Oof. Look at that wound channel. That is pretty gnarly. And unfortunately, I was not ready to destroy this table yet. I believe the H car uh, kind of helped me out with that. I got you, didn't I? Look, if you hit the subscribe button, I promise I'll never do it again. <laughs> Last time, I promise. So my next personal pick for home defense is a handgun. And I'm sure you can guess what it is, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. This one has an eight and three eighths inch barrel, but I always keep it loaded up with something special. These are Underwood Ammo Kentucky Ballistics 600 grain hard casts, and they are packing one heck of a punch. So our targets for the 500 Magnum are going to be six pounds of tomato paste, six pounds of chocolate pudding, a cinder block, and six pounds of refried beans. But before I blast these things, I'm kind of curious about something. <laughs> uh -oh. oh! Okay, here we go. Gonna do tomato paste first. <laughs> All right, chocolate pudding. Let's see if it does better than the hammer. Refried beans. <laughs> All right, last is the cinder block. Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna say 
that the Kentucky Ballistics 600 grain hard cast, they really pack a punch. That is a lot of damage. And now for the drywall test. We have another KB 600 grain hard cast. Let's see what happens. So as you can see here, we have quite the large entrance hole. And then we also have quite the large exit hole. You can't really see very well because of all of the drywall dust, but we have a very large wound channel traveling through that 16 inch block. So as usual, the 500 Magnum did not disappoint. So my next choice is a perfect choice for multiple targets. You know, like the scenario where you have a Furby and someone was irresponsible, got it wet, and then it multiplied. So this exact scenario is why my next choice is the iconic Street Sweeper. This is a 12 gauge shotgun with a 12 round rotary mag. This thing is absolutely ridiculous and probably one of my favorite shotguns and that is why it makes it into my top five home defense weapons. The only issue with this gun is it takes a very long time to load it. So you better hope that those first 12 rounds count for something. Once it's finally loaded, you just gotta wind it up like an old timey pocket watch. All right, here we go. Oh. You just got jammed. So you may have noticed that some of those shells were hitting me and it's because this has an auto eject feature. It bleeds off some of the gases and then shoots them into the cylinder and ejects the spent casing out the back. There is one other disadvantage about the street sweeper and that is unloading. If this thing is completely loaded and you want to get those shells out, the only way to do that is to pull the trigger. So you would put the safety on and then you pull the trigger and rotate the cylinder ejecting the shells each time. All I have to say is you better make sure that it is not on fire. So the street sweeper did a pretty good job at disposing of those Furbies, but I still got quite a few left. Okay, I'm loaded up with 12 rounds of triple hot buck. Let's see how it'll do against the drywall. <laughs> The street sweeper is just really something special, you know? 12 rounds of triple lot buck. That's a lot of lead. Look at all of those holes. And look at all of these exit holes. That made quite a bit of drywall dust. And we made quite a few holes in our ballistic gel. Well, I mean, at least the ones that were semi on target. This last choice is just in case I want a silent option. Some people prefer suppressors, 
I prefer crossbows. If it worked for Daryl, it'll work for me. This is the 10 point Viper S400, and I have some 100 grain broadheads. Ow! That bug just hit me right in the eye. Okay, I'm gonna go with eight two liters. Here we go. Oh! All right, it looks like we have a soda kebab. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five hooked on there. So five, six, good, good, good. All right, well, it looks like I was pretty close. We went through nine two liters. Um, that's pretty impressive. And I think my bolt is still good. Okay, now for the drywall test, and I am very curious to see what happens right now. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> wow, okay. Um, I thought the drywall would have really slowed that bolt down, but doesn't look like it did much. It made it pretty much completely through the drywall and we made it through a little more than half of our 16 inch block of clear ballistic gel. On oh God! Oh God! I ruined my pants and I'm pretty sure I ruined my shirt. I'm gonna have to get one more while I still can. This is my two year anniversary shirt celebrating my two year recovery since my 50 cal accident. This is your last chance to get one and then they're gone forever. Be sure and check them out. There's a link in the description down below. So if I had to pick just one out of the five weapons I selected for my home defense options, I'm gonna have to go with the Street Sweeper. It is absolutely ridiculous. You cannot beat 12 rounds of 12 gauge. Out of those five, what were your favorites? Let me know in the comment section down below and let me know of any other top five videos you'd like to see me do. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it if you did. Be sure and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistics Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you want to pick up a shirt. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.